to remembrance thy tender compassion and mercy, O Lord, and thy loving kindnesses towards us, which have been ever of old. Neither suffer our enemies to triumph, o, uh, to triumph against us. Deliver us, O God of Israel, out of all our misery and trouble. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. My God, in thee have I trusted. Let me not be confounded. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Call to remembrance thy tender compassion and mercy, O Lord, and thy loving kindnesses towards us, which have been ever of old. Neither suffer our enemies to triumph against us. Deliver us, O God of Israel, out of all our misery and trouble. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle of blessed Paul to the Thessalonians, beginning at the first verse. We beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what charges we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to keep his own body in holiness and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles who know not God, that no man transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. The sorrows of my heart are enlarged. O bring thou me out of my troubles, O Lord. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sin. The Lord said unto the woman in Canaan, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, 
Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Jesus said unto her, Woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 21st verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not right to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the little dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, and be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning to all on this second Sunday in Lent. As you can see in compliance with the BC Provincial Health Officer's order, Closing all places of worship in the province, we are again holding a virtual Mass this Sunday. The holy mysteries are offered to the honor and glory of Almighty God, and in prayer that with humility and true contrition we may live out the mystery of faith in God's mercy and grace. In accordance with the Book of Common Prayer and the ancient usage of the Church, the 40 days of Lent are days of abstinence from flesh and fowl and for other acts of self-denial for the love of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
excepting, of course, the Red Letter Days and all Sundays in Lent. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican, traditional Anglican Church in Latin America, the district region of Salvador, where there are Bishop Suffolk and Bishop Santos, Garcia Tista, the clergy and people. We pray too for the parish of St. George's by the sea in Moser's River, Nova Scotia. We remember in our prayers today the sick, the sorrowful, the suffering, and the dying. Commending to God's mercy and care, Audrey Wilson, Sonia Archibald, Sandra Oz, Barbara Gillespie, Peter Downs, Doug Crawley, Kelly Quinn, Bishop Stephen Strawn, Terry Huberts, Jim Ducarm, Colin Rich, Jenny, Paul Dyford, Judy Summerhays, for the Duke of Edinburgh, for all suffering from the COVID-19 virus here in Canada and around the world, praying too for the long haulers, for those suffering from anxiety, isolation, loneliness, and depression from this time of pandemic, for the homeless and the unemployed, for all who desired our prayers, unworthy as we are. We remember in our prayers the men and women of Her Majesty's Canadian Forces serving at home and abroad. We pray too for the men and women who serve as police officers and first responders across our land, for the doctors, nurses, for the health care professionals caring for the sick, praying God's blessing and protection upon them all and their families. Finally, of your charity, I bid your prayers for the souls of the faithful departed, remembering especially Rhoda Francis Rice, Thomas Ridewood, Joyce Least, Jack Nagy, and all whose years mind occurs at this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. That life perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Everywhere Jesus went, crowds gathered, pressing against him, demanding of him some sign, some miracle, some personal intervention to ease their pain and suffering or that of a loved one. Everyone everywhere wanted something from Jesus. And our gospel narrative for this Sunday illustrates yet another such encounter. On a day like so many before, a woman, not of the chosen people, cries out to Jesus, begging, demanding, healing. This Canaanite woman, a Gentile, not of the Jewish faith, comes to Jesus calling him Lord, a sign perhaps more of respect than of belief, yet her words show some knowledge of the ancient prophecies concerning the promised Messiah. Perhaps she had heard of Jesus' miracles. Perhaps she is all but given up. Perhaps she simply stepped forward in faith. Whatever her reasons, this woman acts with the persistence and determination of a mother whose child is in distress. Our gospel for this Sunday is a reminder that faith is both a noun and a verb. For us Christians, faith is a declaration of belief in the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our faith is both a way of living and a way of dying. It permeates all of who we are and all that we do. Faith is also both personal and corporate. It is the faith of the church set forth in her doctrine and discipline. And it is the faith of each Christian within the church. Our Christian faith allows us to know God in a deeper, more intimate way through his Son, Jesus Christ. Our faith enables us to work the mighty works of God in our own lives, giving evidence through them of our belief, not only in words of faith, but more importantly, in acts of faith. As we hear in our gospel story today, even in the face of ridicule and prejudice and social barriers, this Canaanite woman stood firm in her faith and trusted that Jesus could 
and would heal her daughter. And her faith and trust in him were rewarded. We too must match faith with true belief and true belief with active faith. Faith that our prayers are heard. Faith that God's love and grace are more powerful, more effective than any human or worldly power. Faith that God can and does work miracles, both in the ordinary course of daily life and in the extraordinary moments of divine grace and healing. Faith that God does forgive sin. He can heal the sick, and indeed, he raises the dead. Heaven is real. God has prepared a place for us in his heavenly kingdom. God has a plan for our lives we are indeed precious in his sight. Our belief in God's saving power and unconditional love is one of the reasons we turn to him, both in times of pain and in times of distress, in times of great triumph and success, in times of joy and happiness. It is to God in faith that we turn when sin and temptation seek to take hold of our lives and lead us down dark paths of self-destruction. God has promised that he would never abandon us, never leave us without his love, never have us walk alone through life, nor pass through the grave and gate of death without his presence beside us. We read in his holy word, his word is a lantern unto our feet and a light unto our path. Like the woman in our gospel story, we need to believe with every fiber of our being that God will act upon our prayers if we but seek him with true faith, sincerity of heart, a humble will, believing always that for God nothing is impossible. It is our Christian faith, our belief in God revealed in his Son, Jesus Christ, which sustains us and gives us the hope and love and determination to live out our lives amidst its struggles and disappointments, its joys and successes, which has been particularly true for so many in this past year of pandemic and uncertainty, even as we look forward. Sickness and death have come so near. In this season of Lent, we focus on our faith. We seek to renew our faith in Christ, and we refresh our lives in the confidence of our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God. By faith, we confidently Face the future, knowing the Lord is with us each and every moment, leading us upward to our final destiny as his own beloved sons and daughters. Let us then continue to encourage each other, to encourage each other in our faith, in our hope, in our love, offering each day our own small but so important acts of faith, out of love for Christ and our brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. My delight shall be in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hand also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved. Receive, Holy Father, O my dear, from us to God. The spotless host which I have loved, I am a worthy servant, offer unto thee, but of your true power, for my number 
the sins, offenses, and negligences, for all stand here around the council for all faith and Christians, both living and depart. Let it be unto them that may live for salvation unto life eternal. Thy divine divine majesty, we send before thee the sweet smelling savour for our salvation, for thou art the whole world. Amen. And how the spirit of the contrite heart may be the accept of your Lord, and so let us have place to offer ourselves to pray for peace and every day for our life. Come, O thou Father, holy and mighty eternal God, and bless this sad place made ready for thy holy name. Amen. I will wash my hands with thee, since you are Lord, and so shall I go unto thy altar. And I show the voice of man's good name for the Lord of my misery. Lord, I love the habitation of thy house and the place where thy name is found. Lord, I thank the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. I that was in the beginning is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Receive, O Holy Trinity, this oblation which we offer unto thee in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through the honor of Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, Blessed John Baptist, the Holy Apostle Peter, Paul, these and of all the saints, that it may live for their honor and for our salvation, may they thus safe and receive for us in heaven as now we keep on earth through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. The Lord receives sacrifice at thy hands to the praise and glory of his name, both for our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. We beseech thee, O Lord, mercifully to have respect unto these our oblations, that they may be proper unto us for our increase in all godliness and for the advancement of everlasting salvation. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thy unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. To all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, chief of the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the holy prophets, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, and all thy saints, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, through, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory 
world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Be with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things, because Thou hast given us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over the flesh and live no longer unto ourselves, but unto Him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising Thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. (laughs) 
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. As our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Deliver us, O Lord, we beseech thee from all evil past, present, and to come. And during the intercession, bless God, as ever, Virgin Mary, Mother of God, for thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, with Andrew and all the saints, to every death, peace in our days, that by the help of thine ability, may the Lord be free from sins and safe from all of his gifts. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. O Lord Jesus Christ, do did say to thine apostles, Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. Regard not my sins for the faith of thy church, and vouchsafe the grant of thy peace and unity according to thy will, who liveth the reign of God through all ages, world without end. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, Son of Mary, by the will of the Father and the Father of his Holy Ghost, thy death is but life unto the world, delivering by this thy most sacred body and blood from all my iniquities and from every evil, ever cleave unto thy commandments, and suffer never be separated from thee. Let the partaking of thy body and blood, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I am worthy to presume to receive, turn not to my judgment and condemnation, but of thy goodness bear me and forgive me and protect in both the soul and body. Who livest and reignest with the Father and the unity of the Ghost, one God, for all ages, world without end. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee. I believe on him in faith and receive him by faith and through Jesus Christ. Amen. Consider my meditation, O hearken thou unto the voice of my calling, my King and my God, for unto thee will I make my prayer. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. We humbly beseech the Almighty God, that we whom thou dost vouchsafe to regenerate with thy holy sacraments, may continually serve thee in all virtuous and godly living. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God.
the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.